All right, had to take care of some logistics. Now we gotta get going. Still gotta drop the forks, do a couple more things, fuel it up, put the water in it, all that good stuff. Throw a band on. I'm gonna be using 10 degree bands today. I have about 20 or 30 of them. So I typically use those for myself. I'm not in a hurry, I'm not in any big rush. They work, they're okay. I prefer sevens and fours, um, and I've got some 747s to try out. But when I'm just milling small logs, the tens are fine, and that's what I'll be using here today. I'm gonna get a band on, get some fuel, get the water in this guy, drop the forks, get a log loaded up, and we'll start making D-logs. Hopefully uh, I could show you some of that a little more in depth than I did last time. We'll see how it goes. Once I get the log up on the deck, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of roll it around and get it in a good position. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take that face off and try to leave myself that six inch face. And again, I may take a cap cut and then flitch cut the next one because I hate wasting any lumber on a log and I can always use three quarter inch or one inch boards. So if I don't get a nice face here, I'll go ahead and cut a flitch. And this particular log, I had a nice face. So I'm gonna roll it up and I'm gonna drive it right into those side supports. And again, if your mill is aligned right, then all you have to do is make sure that that flat surface is tight against those side supports. And you see here that I'm cleaning out some bark behind the side support so that it does sit flat. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make my next cap cut. I'm just looking to leave a nice solid six inch face on this opening. Drop that cap cut off the log, pull the head back, and if I've got a good opening face here, then I don't need to make another cut. But if I don't, if I feel like it's gonna be a little too deep, I don't have enough face, then the next thing I gotta look at is taking some flitch cuts out so that when I'm finished, the crown of the log is as close to center on the log as I can get. This may mean that I end up with more than a six inch face here. That's okay, we'll take that off later. So I'm making a couple flitch cuts here just to bring the height of this log down. If your log is say 11 inches and you only need a six inch D log, you're gonna have to cut some off and you'll just flitch cut those off and you can edge them on the sawmill later. So we knock those two flitch cuts off, bring the head back, and then we're gonna roll the log again. Now I've got two nice perpendicular faces. And in this case, I'm gonna roll the log again. And this is, this is because I'm trying to make sure that I keep my stress aligned so that it's vertical when I set the log on the mill. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off the bunks again, make sure there's no bark or sawdust in the way. And now I've got a round face to the left. The crown of the log is actually to my left. And I'm gonna go ahead and take another cap cut and some more flitch cuts to get this log six inches deep. Again, I'm making six by six D logs, so I want one round surface and three flat surfaces, and each flat surface, I want six inches. That'll give me a six inch deep D log so that it's easy to figure out when I'm stacking them up, two logs makes a foot, right? And I've got a flat six inch surface. Now on this particular log, because I had to take so much off to get it down, I'm gonna go ahead and roll it so that the crown is up, so the round surface is up. Again, probably gotta clean off some bunks. And I'll probably position the log a little bit to make sure my log clamp is in a good location. And I'm gonna drop her back down on the deck. And instead of making a cap cut, now what I'm gonna do is drop the head of the mill all the way down to make sure that I get that six inch flat surface on the vertical sections of the D-log, meaning the, the top and the bottom. 
In this case, because of the crown was between an inch and an inch and a half deep, I'm gonna drop down about seven and a half inches and take an inch off the bottom of the log. Cut that bottom out. Now, one of the things you also have to consider with D logs is whether you can make FOHC, which is free of heart center, or whether you have to box out the heart. And if you're going to have to box out the heart, you want to make sure that it's deep enough into that D-log that you don't get any twists or anything because of the heart. If the heart is right at the bottom, it's going to cause you problems. In this case here, I've got a nice six by six D-log. I'll pull off all my flitches later. I get rid of that D-log and then I roll the next one up. Now the next one's a little bit bigger, so we're gonna have to take a few more cuts out of it. But this one, I can cut the heart out and I won't have any heart in my D-log. That'll make a nicer, straighter log with less stress. And this one, as you can see, pretty straight log so we're not going to deal with stress in this one and sometimes when you lift them up on the fork they just don't roll off so we grab our nice shorty log right cant hook that I always keep at the head of the mill for my use I'll just pop her off and get her up on the side once I get it on there I usually roll it around a little bit I, I'm looking down the log just kind of seeing is there any stress in here or not I always try to put my stress horizontal hooks to the right that way I always know my first cut stress is horizontal next cut it's going to be vertical once I get it positioned I'm going to check the pith and just kind of see where that pith is can I make an FOHC D log here that's what I'm shooting for so if I can take a six inch D log which is about seven to seven and a half inches deep if I can take it without any heart that's what I'm going to shoot for I take that cap cut, give myself a nice opening face. And I'm gonna roll the log. If this is day in, day out, same process, no matter what I'm making, really. Pretty rare that I change from this method. It makes it very simple, always doing the same thing. Get that flat surface right against those side supports. And if your mill is aligned right and you put it against those side supports like that, you're going to have a nice 90 degree cut on the, on the vertical face, giving you a nice perpendicular two faces. So take that cap cut out. Now, since this log's a little bit thicker, I'll just take a look at it and decide, do I need to cut it or not? In this case, I don't. So now I'm going to roll it again. I've got nice perpendicular faces. I can roll it, clean out the bark. If you get bark in between those side supports or on the bunks, it's going to throw your, your cuts off. We'll clamp her up and we'll take another cap cut. Gotta love that debarker. It just cleans the dirt and rocks and things out of the way of the band and it saves my band. All right, make that first cap cut, push that off the log are back and I'm probably going to have to take some flitch cuts out of this because it's a bit big for just making a simple six inch D-log. So we go ahead, take some flitch cuts out. Now the one thing you're working for at this point is to try to take about the same amount out of each side or a little on one side or the other to get the crown of the log centered on the D-log. It would look kind of funny if all your logs had an off-center crown. And by crown, I mean the round surface of the log. All right, we've cut pretty deep, as you can see. That's probably at least a 10 or 11 inch face. And you can see how the crown is off center now, much taller on the right, but that's okay. We're gonna roll it twice. Put the bark side of the log or the crown side of the log into the side supports. It's flat on the deck, so I'm okay here now. I clamp her down nice and low, and I start taking flitch cuts off again to get down to a six inch deep D-log. I want all my D-logs to be six inches thick or deep 
so that when I'm stacking them on the wall, two logs makes a foot, four logs makes two feet, and so on. Very simple. We take our flitch cuts out, and each of these we can edge later on the mill. A lot of times when I'm milling for myself, I won't even bother to edge them right away. I can do that later. I can either do it on the table saw or I can do it on the mill, but I don't need to do it right away. I can stack them thicker and let them dry as is. Now we're just taking flitch cuts out so that we get that six inch depth so that we have a nice shaped log. We'll drop those flitches off. Now the last thing we've got to do, and you can see here, this D log, which is a nice six inch deep log, you can see that heart, that pith is right there, just, just off center. So this log is closer to 12 inches. We don't need all of that. So what we're gonna do now is we'll mill off about seven and a half inches to give me a nice six inch face top and bottom on the D-log and the stress will then be vertical when I set this on the wall. So at this point, stress is actually horizontal again. So I've taken off the D-log and you'll notice that I come out above the heart. So this is gonna be a six inch D-log free of heart center. That's gonna create a much better D-log. Now all we gotta do is run down the deck and, and mill that remaining cant down. Uh, I just mill it in one buys. A lot of times I mill those on the even so it gives me seven eighths inch thick boards and I can mill that right down to the deck like that. And because I use a lot of one inch, I don't have to worry about whether I can get down to seven eighths of an inch, which you can. But if I set it up right, I may just take out a bunch of seven eighths inch boards and leave me a one inch thick board at the bottom, and that's okay. I use them both. So milling for myself, it's a little different. I don't have to worry about it. And there you go. I milled out the bottom of it. I've got a nice six inch D log on top. Grab the tractor and haul that off to the pile to stack and sticker later and that's all there is to it it's pretty simple cutting d-logs i enjoy doing it they, they go pretty fast i can cut d-logs in about five six minutes each depending on the size this one took a little bit longer because it was a bigger log but they still don't take very long all right folks that's it that's how to make d-logs pretty simple Pretty easy to uh, to make those, and uh, that's time to enjoy the rest of the day. All right, grandkids are shooting the 22. Good times. That's the best way to end a day of milling. That's the way to end the day. Watching the grandkids shoot the 22. Nothing better. <laughs>